Evening, everybody. Under the Friday night floodlights, the garden lights. Welcome along to the night gardens. Welcome to the weekend. And we are starting it with two sides eager to wash away last weekend's Derby Day Blues. One of um, Phil Dowson's Northampton Saints, six days on from defeat at Welford Road. They're boosted by the return of Courtney Laws. He took a, a bang to the head last time out here against Exeter. Saints could do with him in a back row, still missing the injured Juano Augustus and Sam Graham. Another big name involved again from the start for the first time this season is Sam Matavesi, Fiji's World Cup hooker, and Ethan Waller, both added to the front row. Backs wide, George Furbank switches from fullback to fly half with Finn Smith hampered by a sore back, and Ollie Slightholm starts on the wing for the first time in a long time. Well, if you were watching Harlequins last Saturday against Saracens, you will notice how many changes Billy Millard has made. The headline one, perhaps, the return of Caden Murley for his seasonal debut. Last season's top Premiership try scorer on the wing, Tyrone Green, therefore reacquainting himself with the 15 shirt for the first time in 13 months. Danny Cares reacquainting himself with the 9 shirt. Will Joseph gets the partner Andre Esterhazen in midfield. Elsewhere, Wales World Cup tight head Dylan Lewis starts his first game as a Harlequin with Finn Baxter in for Joe Marler on the other side of the scrum. Joe Launchbury has been given the weekend off, so Ernie Herbst starts. So many head-to-heads, Benny. Well, in the battle up front, obviously the captains will play a huge part, but I think they are such a barometer of their team's performance that tonight around the field, both sides of the ball, they're going to be hugely important. Two fascinating back lines going head to head, really good to watch in attacking sense. Can't wait to see Freeman and Joseph go at it. Two young centres trying to apply their trade in the 13 shirt, but it's got to be the tens who control things. Smith has been on fire since he's been back. And Furbank, when he's got go forward ball, when it's quick, he's an excellent 10 and he really gets a lovely flow to the Saints game. There's Caleb Murley, number 14, a returning Premiership threat for the first time again this season. And Tyrone Green, all the wonders that he's done on the wing so far this season. Now back at fullback and into the home dressing room. Ethan Waller with um, a last minute hug from James Ram. George Furbank at 10 tonight, prowling around and. Harlequins led out by Alex Dombrandt. He would have been hurt, stung by. Last weekend's performance, they were really out-muscled, out-fought by Saracens. A face when I saw him at the start of the week in training that suggested they were all focused on sorting out business here. Marcus Smith as well. The Stoop last Saturday, a pretty miserable experience for players and coaches and supporters, all of them streaming out at the end Sunday is ruined shipped half a dozen tries to Saracens beaten by a team they least like losing to certainly created opportunities plenty of time Marcus Smith and co in Saracens 22 tonight it's up to men like him to exploit those opportunities and Lewis Loveland back in the bosom of home after really taking the fight to Leicester Another all-energy performance at Welford Road. But here are home roars for the home boys. Start of the week spent tending to the scars from Welford Road. He was watching last Saturday, very much jogging out tonight to clock on Courtney Laws. And they too down to the business of preparing for this one this week. Re-establishing perhaps their place in the top four. It's sixth against fifth. And whoever wins this is back into the top four. Both could even go second, but so much to look forward to. The likes of Lewis Liner up against the returning Ollie Slight home today. James Ram and Caden Murley. We've talked about Furbank and Smith. Sarah Cox, our referee, Anthony Woodthorpe and Andrew Jackson are the flag carriers, TMO, Ian Tempest. It's uh, a chilly 
the dry start to the weekend. And yeah, for the 50th well. time in the Premiership, it is Northampton and Harlequin Saints lead the series 29-19 with just the one draw so far here 22 years ago, back in 2001. Here is the last of the 2023 20, versions. Marcus Smith and Harlequins on the front foot, first up. Very early reintroduction for Holly Slight, home returning as a starter for the first time since February. Scrum half, Alex Mitchell. Queens will have watched carefully how Leicester pressurised him last Saturday. Don't give him an ounce of air to use. Yeah, the common factor, Nick, last week in both of these teams' losses was the breakdown. They both got dominated at the breakdown. It'd be interesting to see who's learnt the most from that. It's an opportunity for Howe already. Saints have it. With um, Chun Yamunga. Starting across the tight headlock tonight. Alex Coles joining him in the second row. No Alex Moon. Mitchell's long kick to Green, wearing 15 again, in for Nick David. Trucked up by Herbst, but um, losing the payload. And up to halfway goes Munger, Mitchell there quickly. And then the kick from Furbank, it's an interesting one, and there's a lot of pressure on Esther Hazen because look at Hendy. Hendy made sure that Esther Hazen stayed honest. And did carry over onto the line. It's a goal line dropout. Northampton will get it back. A disrupted defensive line in front of them off this kick. But this already is showing us the change in Northampton's tactics this year. Last year, we saw them running it from all over the field, playing out of their own 22. This year, a bit of a box kick forced the error. They've still got the same high attacking output, but they're picking and choosing their moments better. And they're creating more problems for the opposition when they have the ball. quickly by Pearson and the threat provided by Tommy Freeman getting used to seeing Freeman Austin as a as a midfielder as an outside center he's growing into that 13 shirt isn't he, he was brilliant last week in the loss carries on that outside he's got the pace the power as Jekko was saying in the build-up the only question we don't really know yet we won't find out for a while is his passing skills which is quite ironic coming from Jekko because he never ever passed <laughs> actually a number of players you, you think of of him, Tommy Freeman, you, you think of Furbank at, at 10, Austin. You, you, you're the correspondent at playing in multiple positions. What are, the, what are the challenges for those two players? It's easier for Freeman going from the wing to 13. Defensively, it's a bit more difficult. A uh, lot more difficult, actually, if you're going to move from fullback to 10 because the time on the ball, the pressure's a lot higher. You've got a lot less time to make a decision. So, But he's done it loads of times before, and he is a brilliant rugby player, Furbank. First line out, won by Quinns and Dino Lamb. And they can set some stones just inside Saints territory. And Murley reminding us of all the mischief he caused last season. Green, likewise. That back three tonight for Harlequins. Green and Murley and Liner. Full of um, spit and fireworks. Just great to watch Marcus Smith. As he lets go of the ball, as it's going into contact, he always glances to the opposite opposite touchline just to get a scan of the whole space. Where's the where's the weakness in the defensive line? Not following the ball with his eyes, looking for what he's going to do next time he's got his hands on it. And it's laid back by Walker and taken quickly by Kerr, who's the best at doing things quickly. And then under pressure, the little clip through, hoping that Liner might cotton onto it. It's um, hard work for Hendy. So much so that Quinns have rolled him over the ball and Courtney Laws had to take a step backwards. So one giant stride forwards from Finn Baxter. Now Will Evans and Quinns off that. Kerr snipe really questioning here. Kerr again and immediately Murley. How long's his season been? Four minutes and 22 seconds. 
and the sharpest tool in the Premiership box last season has his first try of this. Big start for Quinns. They really punched holes at Northampton, tried to work some really quick ball. Watch Danny Kerr and the reaction of the other players, particularly Marcus Smith. As soon as the tap comes, that's because they're all on the same page. They know when there's a penalty, Danny Kerr's likely to go. They're all on his shoulder. He's got three choices, ended up putting the kick through, but they make the turnover. They get the ball back. And then when they get to this position, they've got options either side. Three on two on the outside channel. They don't need to use... Lewis Liner in the far channel as Murley just backs himself, uses his power, and from that distance against Mitchell, he's always going to win that battle. Mitchell makes the tackle, but he can't stop the yardage. Last season's top try scorer with 15 up and running. Obviously tries all good. It's Reasonable confirmed. start for him, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome back. Five minutes, amazing try scoring record. You just sensed, didn't you, when Quinns ran out? They, they're, they're fully loaded. You said about the training of the week, they look like they've got it in the eyes as he got it with the boot. Yeah, not, quite, not quite, but decent enough for Quinns. Five up early on. Caden Murley's score. He's been nursing a knee injury. That's what's delayed his start to the season, but he is. He's all right, Benny. Just that threat of realising as well that because of the three on two, the defender can't fly out of the line quite as quickly as he would have wanted or the ball would have been floated over his head. So Murley knows that Mitchell's on the back foot there. Can't come forward with as much line speed as he would have wanted. So I'll keep hold of myself. I won't risk the pass. I'll use my power to bury over the line. He's not the biggest bloke in the world, isn't he? And th th those days where you thought actually to be a back, you had to be the size of a giant. Players like Murley and, and Liner are, are, are proving the opposite. Well, I sort of feel like I set the trend, really, for being that small power athlete, oh, and these guys have just followed it on. But he's incredibly powerful. You saw it with the finish. He doesn't mind the physicality. But he's, he's just so strong. We saw it last year, and virtually everyone he played against, he dominated. Oh, those fast feet as well. This, however, very much a job for the big boys. Oz, what have you got your eye? Well, just looking at the blind side, it looked a little bit too easy to me, and this is the reason why. If you look at Munger getting to his feet, he's just a little bit slow. But not only is he slow, all the eyes are looking into the ball. Nobody out those first three defenders looks to the outside. They've actually got four defenders on the short side and only two attackers. If you look out, scan, move people around, you've got enough defenders there to stop that from being a try. Saints defence has been brilliant all season up until that point. That angle as well showed how Murley swerved on the pass, so he took himself even further to the outside shoulder of Munger. Harlequin's loose had his Finn back step. Finn back step in for Joe Marler tonight, by the way. Uh, Joe taking his mandatory weekend off after all of his World Cup exertions. Baxter just guilty of losing his bind. Next job, put it behind you. you have to defend a more slow walk in from Saints, just trying to work out where the gap might be if their original call was on, it is. Pearson wins it, Matavesi. Oh, and then the other winger, Oli Slyo. Two flying wingers, back in harness, back in the try-scoring business. Well, great response from Northampton Saints, and another powerful carry. But this one's all about the decoy line that runs in front, just attracts the defender's eyes. Maybe there's a slight bit of contact, really good angle here to show it. But there's the tight line, just maybe, no doesn't run into Murley, I think it is there. All clear. Will Evans held by Matavesi. Murley just gets his eyes drawn. And then all they're trying to do is create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Slight Home. We know his power, one-on-one. -on -one. He's always going to be able to drive through, get those extra metres. Uh, he's returning as a starter for the first time since February. And this conversion is a successful one, and Saints ahead.
just looking at it again, like you said, Ben, the decoy line's really good because he doesn't stay on one line, Freeman. I think he runs inside and then back outside and just closes the shoulder at the end. It's actually Dingwall on the line. That creates the space, and like you said, the one-on-one -on -one scenario to get the inside shoulder. Sort of slight dog leg as well, They'll, uh, as well there. Murley went up harder than Marcus Smith. Green. Safe under the high ball, then Skittle. And then Evans snatches it back to Smith and Smith to Dombrandt. And Dombrandt beautifully away to Hammond. And what a start to this match. Forwards now warming their hands and Smith as well. Employing Dylan Lewis, first start as a Harlequin. Wales international care to Smith. Uh, soft to Liner, but dropped by Lewis Liner. Alex Mitchell. Alex Mitchell, England's number one, number nine, against England's number two, number nine tonight. Well, just look at this carry from Don Brandt. What he's so good at is putting himself under pressure. He actually has to slow down there, but so difficult to take that pass when you've overrun it. And he just does a really good job of changing his line, slightly treading water. But when he puts that much pressure on the pass and on himself, if he does get through, usually it's too late to react for the defender. Only line out take from Dino Lamb and then a crunching tackle from Furbank and then the chase from Freeman and Liner under a lot of trouble. And Saints have it back. Heavy tackle in midfield setting up this position. Ludlam away smoothly. Both sides have started in fourth gear, if not fifth gear, and then Smith had to beware a bouncing ball and oh, that is not friendly for Green but strong enough to hold his ground. Well there, Green. Smith put him under huge pressure. Okay, make sure we're onside. Yes, please. Will Evans, the last link as care provides as much meterage between the ball and um, a challenging Chunyamunga. Well, Mitchell, how well did he do to find Hendy? Youngster being at fullback on the wing now at fullback again in the last three weekends. And here's Ethan Waller getting a first start tonight uh, ahead of his big brother Alex Matavesi back as well. And then that's lovely from Freeman. And here goes Pearson. That's a really good tackle from Kerr, and it needed to be. Quinns have done well to slow things down. Really gummed up that ball there where. A fast recycle might have pressurised him. It might yet still. Laws, he's hurled to the floor. Ludlam, hit by two Harlequins. Herps, perhaps the most significant. Dingwall lays it back. And Pearson again, reminding us of all the good things he did with Irish last season. Ludlam, reminding us once again of all the good things he did. The Saint skipper. Well, Furbank held on to it. Went forward. Went forwards. Two great bits of play from Pearson, but it all would have come to nothing if Mitchell hadn't done a really good job of keeping this ball in. So easy to step back and put your foot out there, but almost like an NFL wide receiver, leaves his feet dead on the turf, offloads, and then Pearson in space. This is what he's great at. Two big carries in this run. Freeman again, isn't it? His ability to just slide to the outside is really good. All stemmed from the big tackle as well, the pressure that they've got now. High-risk manoeuvre that from Furbank, though. If you blitz out the line like that, normally against somebody like Marcus Smith, it normally ends badly for you, but just take a look at this time. He blitz out the line, it's not Smith he's after. Lester Hayes and he tries to hit. To be fair, if I'm going to blitz somebody, it's not him. He's one person that you want to stay away from as a back defending. Great tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. Can't really change your mind, though, can you? Once you... Oh, no, hang on a minute. I made a mistake. Couple of steps. There's a forward there, yours. <laughs> it's better to hit him early than hit him hit you late. Yeah. What, what we're all enjoying from both sides at the moment is just that ability to find the player off the shoulder. It's, it's, it's beautiful, soft hands. They're taking contact when they need to, but they're not necessarily looking for it. Well, it's great rugby from both teams, but equally, there'll be other sides around the league watching this going, why is nobody competing at the breakdown? Why are they allowing the opposition such fast ball? When both of these sides, you give them fast ball, they're incredibly dangerous in attack. 
got to see. We've only seen Evans over one ball so far. He nearly got it. I'm surprised they're not going after every single Saints rook. We're going to get you to answer that question, or at least try to, once we've seen what happens with this latest passage of play. Yes, please, to England, number nine, it's Mitchell and Kerr. It was uh, Don Brandt, uh, not so long ago, and England number eight, who brings it away. And now here's Murley. Very early try on his return to the Premiership for the first time this season. George Hammond on his knees to the left, but this looks like it's going to be a, a kicking job and a chasing job. And then a rather weary looking Dino Lamb as the ball dribbles out. Maybe one you can both answer. What, why aren't teams competing at the breakdown as much as they might at the moment? Maybe they just think. Saints are very good in attack when they go wide, so we want a wider defensive line. Let's get that in place, get it in early and get some line speed. And then the same for the for Saints, they're probably thinking if we pressure them too much and we lose two or three bodies and they get fast ball, they normally score against the 12-man width defensive line. Dino Lamb's been busy in the line out so far. Early running hard and the defensive tackle from Slighthome and Slighthome worked so hard to win it back. So well to chase that ball down. Now they've got some width here, Saints. Oh, behind Hendy. Frustratingly for them, but look how hard Northampton work over the ball. These two sides, the quickest rock recyclers in the Premiership at the moment, both hovering around four seconds. The value of quick ball to both of them. That one a little bit slower, this just about resetting. We saw a better competition from Harlequins there, all to do with the quality of the tackle, making sure you knock Northampton back. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's George Hammond who found himself in a, a room that he shouldn't have been. He's really starting to come into himself again this season, George Hammond. He's played over 50 games for the club, but he's beginning to get regular Premiership starts this season. Quinn's still without Stefan Levis at the moment, working his way back from injury. Here's Sam Matavesi. Find out a bit of a lottery for both sides last Saturday at Welford Road, but both sides have started strongly here. That pass, not the best. For Furbank, but he accelerates, and does what he can to get over the game line, or at least somewhere near it. Here's Matavesi. <laughs> Smith pressurizing his opposite number. It's a decent kick, but Green once again. Reminding us of his qualities as a fullback. Really good kick that, wasn't it? Meter outside the 22. Three guys get the chance to hit him. Great take, Green. No, no. Oi, just stay there, laddie. Oi, oi, lads. Eyes up, eyes up. Furbank laying it back. Once again, neither side overly keen to play much rugby in the middle third of the field. KG, we saw this when Saints played Exeter, didn't we? A lot of kicking, and then they're just waiting for that one mistake. That's why I have. Not that sort it's of inside, mistake, it's inside, it's inside. The... Always in, always in. I think that was the voice of Ian Tempest, the TMO, who was um, confirming to Sarah Cox that yeah, he yeah. was inside. Well spotted tempo. Jack Walker, first start in seven months last weekend. Lots of pent up energy after his time with England at the World Cup, working hard in the background, but not so much on the pitch. Another good stop on Esther Hazen. Here's Dylan Lewis. 
54th Wales cap in the quarterfinal against Argentina in Marseille. Gentlemen from Cardiff this season. Yes, please, Gwens. Lina working hard. Hendy up highest. Laws. Covered from a little bang to the head that kept him out of the Leicester game. That went backwards. And Mitchell straight away. First instinct to kick, to get the bounce. Green has plenty of time to take this quickly. Wonderful pass to Care, who found himself in a hole, but not for long. And now he escapes gleefully. Wonderfully, Danny Care. Back to Green. Those two have earned 60 metres for Quinns. What about that? And now Smith with his kick. It's Dombran lumbering away on that right-hand side. Lumbering's probably the wrong word. He was he was sprinting <laughs> was quite sprinting. hard, but uh, but that was impressive oh, from Quinn. How Quinn's. good is that from Danny Kerr? Living proof that a pensioner can go from his own try line. Steps inside twice, and again, the second step's just lovely. And then look how clever he is. He just bides his time, waits for defenders to bite in on him. Really good, clever rugby from Danny. How well did Courtney Laws do to get back and make that tackle and then compete really hard, got back to his feet, slowed it down. There's still space in that wide channel, but just that fraction of a second that Courtney Laws slowed it down just gave Northampton enough time to get just about enough cover over there. What I said to them, okay. to I need enough time for a bit I'm of synaptogen and oxygen to come on for Danny Kerr. None of us are in that profession. Yeah. So when they're on, I've got to stop because yeah, I've got to protect Danny their mind. Right? Uh, Alex yeah. Waller. I, I understand what you're today. saying. Look. Here's Sam Matavesi. Right. So Look much emotion it. for him over, over the last month or so. You remember that the week leading up to the England quarter final. Just take that cut right now. He found out that his, his father, it. Sorelli, had died. Sorelli, such a, a giant of Cornish rugby in particular. Sam going back home before the quarterfinal and then flying back to Marseille. And now he's back with his club. And so is England's Alex Mitchell. Really good kick pressure from Alex Dombrant, though. Just did enough. Seven, seven. Really shortened down Mitchell's kicking option. Great chance now for Quinns to try a similar play this part of the field. Normally where you run something off the back down the channel. They move liner further out wide, so Mike and wider actually. Once again it's Lamp. He's double top tonight, Ben. Brilliant line out pressure from Courtney Laws prevented the ball being delivered. Um, playing an advantage here. Here's Green. What I liked about Quinn's there, Nick, they get a penalty. I didn't see it like that. And it's I'll everybody that. taking a breath and going, oh, we've got a penalty. Five or six of them run towards where the penalty zone is. Sarah Cox, just having a chat with Courtney Laws, I, I thought he was fine, he got his hand to the ball, whether he just held onto it onto the floor a little bit long, but really good pressure, gets up, hand onto the ball, still on the ball, not on any arm, but never wear the penalty. Oh, wonderful from Dombrant to Kerr, and then Esther Hazen, punching his way up. Saints defence, despite creaking doors, holding on, more than holding on. It was Quinn's holding on, and Saints have the penalty. Furbank again with another massive tackle on Esther Hayes, and yes, Esther Hayes and wins the collision. But he'll be sick of the sight of Northampton's number 10, that man. This is another big, big shot. Really set the scene for this game from the, from the home team's perspective. Marcus Smith did what he could. Causes Esther Hazen to really rise in the tackle, which maybe gives the opportunity for some of those extra Northampton players like Courtney Laws to get in and around the ball. He survives the clear out. Hands, really good technique from Laws. Matavesi to Pearson. Ludlam. Mitchell. Away by Dingwall nicely to create this width on the right-hand side and the try scoring slight home. Chases the kick, 
to have a bit too much juice on it. Oof, only just <laughs> as Hendy made uh, the life of Lewis Liner interesting. They might sell for a quick one Marcus here, Nick. Might kick it sideways. Fast. He didn't get much distance on the last clearance. It only landed about 30 metres away. Sense it's a good opportunity to have a little go at a drop goal here. Well, all of um, Quinn's big artillery gathering away on the left-hand side. He's got time if he wants to have a go. Yeah. So Saints come the other way. And Freeman. He's tackled by Liner. One of those players who was um, a spectator for much of last season. Tackle from Herbst in for Joe Launchbury. It's a uh, work of Dingwall and then Slight Home lays it back. Matavesi. Mitchell has a look down the right hand side. Oh, it's intercepted. The smart money might be on Murley, but he had to cut back inside. He didn't fancy the sprint with Hendy. He looked up and almost immediately didn't think that he would back himself, but instead it's Smith and Liner on this other side, and the ball bouncing again dangerously, penalty, isn't it? difficultly for Dingwall. Brilliant from Dingwall. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant by going to ground. He didn't need to go to ground. But by doing it, he forces the error. He drops so late. You need to be on your feet. Buys the penalty, doesn't he, offliner? It's clever play. When he threw this, I thought, right, we'll find out how fit Murley is. He's got a bit of a head start there, hasn't he? Hendy does well to make him step back on the inside. Look how many Saints players are around the ball at that pace. They really are working hard defensively, Saints, this season. Significant improvement from last year. Well, apologies for the language. Laws, tail of the line out. Freeman, Ooh, he's done very nicely right up to that moment, and then Green's onto it, and now Green's chasing, and now Hendy has another gallop back. He's quick, isn't he, Hendy? And in the end, Furbank needed to clear up the bits, but he is quick, George Hendy. Talked about his um, his unique running style, Ben, but it doesn't matter how you run, what it looks like, as long as you cover the ground quicker than the other bloke, and he does that very nicely. And there was the work completed by Furbank. Just a bit concerned for Northampton about some of their accuracy in those wide channels. Just. Happy just to throw the ball, not necessarily got the targeting right. That needs to change because we know how dangerous Harlequins are when they can flick the switch, go from defence to attack very quickly. And the Quins were bruised at this point of the game last Saturday against Saracens. Driven over their line, off short range line outs, and here they are. Trying to do likewise. Oh, it's been snatched away, but um, Sarah Cox that playing the advantage. Was very close to a yellow card for side entry. Because it was it was pretty cynical. That looked like it was going over to me. Not enough to give a penalty try. Before you got there, there was an entry. Well, yeah. Might just have to be whiter than white here, Northampton, because that will be no in the referee's mind. They're pretty nicely set up when the extra bodies come in. They've lost all those Northampton shirts to the side. They're not going to be able to counter it. And clearly goes past Ernie Herbst and in at the side, Pearson. He's quite lucky there, I think. Quinsett piece had been going really well up until last Saturday, and they're looking to rediscover that knack now. Dombrand drives in Esther Hayes, and with all of his tonnage, Danny Cares there, steering it over the line. Try! And it is a returning walker. No lack of effort from Northampton there, but Quinns are so well set. And Northampton end up 
with all their green shirts on either side of them all, no one directly in behind the ball, or certainly not enough bodies. So, again, go to the front, they drive straight, they manage to get off that touchline where they want to be, and then just watch all those green shirts get split, and, not, and Harlequins just go straight through the middle, three or four on either side from Northampton. That tight bind from Harlequins, and they see the line and all go down together. All right, Woods. He had a couple of months at the World Cup in France, but only uh, one appearance off the bench, that game against Chile in Lille. But what he would have learned being around a World Cup squad, all that he would have listened to, the voices. Otherwise, Marcus Smith, who um, had, as we know, significantly more game time. And uh, his conversion is a good one. Quinn's five points the better. See how hard Northampton are fighting. Very upright, a lot of them, though. Slight home laws, stood bolt upright, all the white shirts, backs bent and driving in a more scrummage position. played here at the gardens it's uh, it's been a busy bright start to this weekend and then Hendy goes down awkwardly and it is a penalty goes underneath must attempt to go for the ball does, doesn't he gets amazing height there I don't think there's any anything more than that because Murley was certainly checked in his running he had bodies in front of him Northampton blockers and Hendy almost appeared out of nowhere, but certainly it is a penalty. A couple under their bobble hats, Richard Hill on the left-hand side, England's team manager, Kevin Sinfield, England's defence coach, Richard Hill. Part of your bunch, Ben, who were enjoying themselves in the Hammersmith a couple of nights ago. <laughs> that didn't go well. <laughs> he tried to kick the ball off and it bounced back in. He's looking slightly <laughs> no, no. healthier than you are, Cheers, it has mate. to be said. Thanks very much. One by Coles and one well, and Ludlam, and he's got Matavesi to his right-hand side. Ludlam tried to do it on his own, ran out of room. It's just a waste for me, that. They've just scored a really good try off the back with loads of different options, different angles, tough to defend. And you go down a really small space that sides are just so used to defending. Again, it's accuracy, isn't it? Your accuracy is not just passing. There we go, there's a... For example, actually, they get oh, back. Oh, and Ludlam has it. Off a right old mess of a line-out. But the roar from the Shires and the roar from Ludlam. And same straw level. Well, having made that slight error of sticking his foot into touch and not keeping the ball alive, he gets an absolute gift. From the resulting line out. Missed call between hooker and jumpers. Really good hands there from Courtney Laws back to, back. to keep the move ball. alive. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no problems. Was it Matavesi who offloaded? I'm not sure, but really good offload. Keep that alive. And then Ludlam, the ball bobbled up with a clear line to the line in front of him. Courtney Laws, isn't it? Get the ball off the floor and over the defender quickly and leave it in the space for Ludlam to run onto. We start taken by uh, Coles, last Saturday's number six is tonight's number five. It's interesting to see Fiji's World Cup lock, Timo Mayanavanua, part of the warm up crew this evening. He's making his way back from um, injury against England in the quarter final. Backwards, fortunately for Green. And he uh, oh, cuts inside Laws and keeps going. Waller beating all ends up as well. Here's Jack Walker. Oh, that went forwards. 
I went forward. Oh, I thought I went forward. What about the footwork from Tyrone Green? I thought I went Green? forward. First step was good, the second one was electric. No right to beat the first defender. Courtney Thorpe is going which way? <laughs> and then Waller tackles fresh air. Showed about high tackle, wasn't it, from Waller? Come on, Come on, Meantime, in the stands, just down below us, there was a bit of, ke of, of a kerfuffle. Wondered what was going on. Uh, she's just got engaged. Congratulations. To the two. I think I think I think the chap on her right was the chap who asked, but we don't. We're, we're looking for confirmation of that. Anyway, well done the two of them. It's a place to pop the question, isn't it? Anyway, Saints that looked um, a little bit forward as well, at least from this angle. But Slight Home and Co can continue to conspire. Mitchell Ludlam, <laughs> steam coming out of every pore at the moment. It's been uh, not just turned over, but lost. Clear out crew, not quite as accurate as they needed to be, Benny. Got the extra metres, but it, all that does is allow some of those extra defenders to get in behind. And oh, I didn't see that bit. Max Dombrant so good over the ball. It's quite a long place from Ludlam. He does his best, but Dombrant does a really good job of reaching and pulling the ball back to him. Yeah, don't worry. We'll, a we'll a weekend high of 34 post-contact metres last weekend, Lewis Ludlam, absolutely yeah, central to um, to that man's defensive Come system on. these days. It's Lee Radford, yeah, Saints' new defence coach, took over from Ian Vass at the beginning of this season. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, we've seen Kevin Sinfield in the crowd tonight. Sinfield and Jamie Langley at Sale and Martin Gleeson, all former league players who... Um, have spoken with Lee Radford about how you stiffen a, a union defence. One of the things that, that all of them have told him is that uh, the movement and the decision-making, Austin, and the communication is all well and good, but one of the keys is to do that when you're fatigued in the last quarter of the match. Yeah, working collectively is really important when you're tired, but also tackle technique. Just having a high percentage of non-misses is massive. And they're really good at that at the minute. We saw that earlier, actually. I clipped something up, but we'll have a little look at it, actually. The, the break before. The little break before. What defensive coaches really like to see is the ability to get back in numbers and a desire to work collectively. So... Just, um, one thing is they're rolling away like they're very good at like, well, just back a on his feet after a little bit of bit, treatment. Uh, like, just, so we take a look at it, Nick. They're so quick on the ball, they're just slowing us down a little bit I, on that. I think they're all right at the moment. Just see like, how many players get back. back. Yeah. There's the tackle. Murley's in there. There's only one other guy yeah, from Quinn's in that picture. But you'll find there's eight Saints players in the area to affect the breakdown. That's a good desire in terms of getting over the ball. They don't win it. There's a lot of effort to get there. Just got to be a bit careful about getting too narrow, though, haven't you? Everyone get drawn to the ball, particularly against Harlequins, who will play wide if they win that ball. And Smith happy to take the clattering. Uh, equally so, Dylan Lewis. <laughs> Care winning extra metres. That's Furbank again. This is a brilliant tackle from Furbank because he's beaten, turns and makes the tackle in an instant. Defensively, he is having an excellent game today. Straight in the side. And he knows it, look, he just gave him the nod. Side, yeah. My moustache is better than yours. It's beaten, no, no. gets back, Inside. steps off his outside foot. That Number is a six. really tough tackle, Nick, but you move him to the left 12, and you recognise that he's going to try and make a break <laughs> and you have to jam the anchors on and get low to make the hit. Outstanding from Waller to swing his legs around and get his, himself in an onside position before he competed over the ball. He was having to backtrack to that as well. Really good mobility from the big man. <laughs> George Furbank, high end multi functional player, fullback to fly half against Leicester last Saturday, starting at fly half today. Uh, Finn Smith, by the way, if you didn't hear, missing tonight, uh, nursing some back spasms. Pearson, one of five involved tonight who were with London Irish last season. Mitchell tried to get Hendy away elaborately, didn't quite come off, but ball won by James Ram. Not mentioned James Ram much tonight, but. Once again, Quinn's conceding penalties at the breakdown. I think if you're a Quinn's fan, you're going to feel aggrieved at that breakdown. He was isolated. 
looked like Lewis got over the ball really well. I want to see that again. That's a tough one. Quinn's coaches. Slightly different jobs this season. Jerry Flannery on the left, very much in charge of defence and defence only now. Danny Wilson, a new face. He's the head coach having a chat with Nick Evans and Billy Miller of the DOR. The breakdown might decide this game, mightn't it? Because we know both these teams are going to want to play. It's a little bit loose. Both teams getting opportunities at the ball. Laws, Mitchell, and Furbank and Ludlam takes it on. Saints setting up position in midfield. And Dingwall amongst those who help get it away. Ludlam struggling, Nick. Stay down after that carry. Uh, Maybe it's a dead leg from the hit before. Yeah. Not sure how much longer he can um, survive this, James. Ram as well. And Northampton at the moment really operating with only 13 fully fit players. Oh, it's, that's gone loose again. Quite sticking. Game going through a little bit of a scruffy patch after a really bright opening half an hour. Munger. A set two between Courtney Laws and Esther Hazen, out of shot. Just a few words with each other. Courtney Laws going back at him. They're not happy at all, Courtney Laws, with the big South African centre. Tom Brandt doing his best to pull him away. Leave that, leave, leave that to us, OK? We can't be having the S and our coming over here. Leave that to us. Uh, Northampton are oh, making the change. Uh, Courtney Laws will be joined by Angus Scott Young, because rather sadly, that's um, a premature departure for Northampton's captain, Lewis Ludlam. Scott Young, a returning Australian. He missed the East Midlands derby. But I'm back with us tonight. A huge loss, Ludlam. Absolutely medicine. huge, because he's almost been the man that has been... He's the explosive expert that opens the door for all the other runners, the likes of Pierce and Laws, but without him, who's going to do that role of running into a brick wall? Yeah, and he's, he did it a lot last week. He was their main carrier. Just looking, Nick, at the defence from Quinns. They've been really good. Watch how good they are. They get a good defensive width with four guys. They present that defensive width, but they go forward. Once they realise they're out of numbers, watch the two outside guys, Merle and Joseph. They don't then commit and keep going forward because that would, that would allow Saints to turn the corner and make the break. But they both just stand their ground and back off, almost become part of the Saints' attack. It's very good at defence. We've seen a lot of sides this season actually advancing in that 13 channel and opening up the far 15. It's too easy to break a side if they keep coming forward at you when you've got them for numbers. Great defence. Well, we talked about some, um, some problems for James Ram and, and, and a double blow for, for Northampton uh, at the same time. There was no foul play on that in the background. Correct, there's no foul play. Off goes it's Ram. Yep. No foul play. It's cleared it off. And Tom Litchfield has, has been brought... Well, the, the life of a coach sometimes. All the hard work that's gone into preparing for this evening this week. And at the same time, you lose your, your skipper and your big ball carrier, Lewis Ludlam, and you lose one of your biggest ball carriers out wide, James Ram, as well. Stay there. Stay ten. I think um, Tom Litchfield has gone to centre, and He's caught that on the outside. Furbank it's headed on the out outside. onto the wing, we'll see. Nobody had a chance to compete for that ball. No, Freeman's gone onto the wing, sorry. Clearly not straight and caught on the outside. Another big error. Prime attacking position for Saints, and they get a not straight. First last line out. Oh, do you know that pen I lent you before the match started? Can I have it back? Mine's just run out. He's holding on. Do you want to buy a pen? He's holding on. I gave it to you for nothing earlier. Now you're trying to sell it back to me. That's called capitalism, Nick. I'll get another one. Don't worry. You've just joined. Steady! <laughs> there you go. You can have your pen back. Stop whinging. Do you want the colouring book as well? Sideways. No one's gone forward. Uh, reset the scrum. Sarah Cox telling us it just went sideways. Oh, you keep it gone. Present. I'll sign it for you later. A lot of chat being directed at Sarah Cox now. 
just the chief to maybe have a word with the captains. Obviously, a new captain for Northampton, but just say, look, leave me to it. I don't want every scrum. 16 sets of voices telling me what's happening. Crouch! Bind! Set! Steady! Time's up at the end of this, however, ball spits out, Mitchell gathers and scores! Sharp as! England scrum halves! Shoulder to shoulder, ear to ear, Mitchell with the try. Well, in the battle of the two nines, this one will send a few shockwaves through Danny Kerr's mind. Let's see how the ball comes out. Yeah, it's clearly out, isn't it? Goes behind Danny Kerr, he doesn't even see it. And then Mitchell's foot gets to it first. And he's always going to win that race. Oh, it's kicked out, isn't it? Was it Dino Lamb's boot that just kicked it through Danny Kerr's legs, nutmegged him straight onto Mitchell's boot. Yeah. Very unlucky for Danny Kerr, but Mitchell razor sharp. Yeah, tries all clear. Gives Northampton a healthy lead going into the break. <laughs> and the conversion is sound. Well, what a first half. There's another winger who didn't take long to reintroduce himself, Ollie Slighthope. 21 12 at half time. Some work to do for the visiting Londoners. Tackle! Old Joseph. 21 year old, getting used to calling himself a, a Quinns player. After yes, growing please. up with London Irish, but like his big brother Jonathan. It's Will Joseph and Andre Esterhazen in midfield for Harlequins tonight. Danny Kerr, who was um, central to lots of things in that first half, most of them good, but um, a moment that he will regret towards the end when he was rather burgled by Mitchell. It's an area that's been good for Saints. When they've managed to secure their line out, that quick drive and then punch out of it. Can't get the ball back quickly enough to Mitchell, though. Does he spill that? Side position into Sarah Cox. A little bit side the back, you're just offside when you get him. Before then. Just get that element of surprise when Northampton have a little punch right. drive there because people are so often used to seeing them play wide off the first phase ball. Just catch them napping a little bit, get that punch drive going, give them good momentum, and then the next ball carrier tends to win that collision. There's Josh again. I'm sure he's found his seat yet, but he's got a reasonable view from behind the posts of this kick from George Furbank. Aid the stat told me just before that kick that George Furbank was yet to miss this season. In his interest, I didn't mention it before he kicked. He's now 10 out of 10. Really good game, defensively and with boots. There's Josh, look at him. He's, 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 he's like a machine, he never stops giving us the angles that matter. Good lad, Josh. Good lad, Mitchell, clearing kick. Northampton yeah. throw that. Carry back. Much was convinced there was a fingertip on there. Really numbers, man. Just like numbers. Numbers! Come on, big quicker. Big pressure from Coles there just to tap that back fairly wildly. And Marquins get the benefit. There's a lot going on in that lineup. My goodness, how well Dino Lamb did to bring that down with his fingertips. I still think there's some, some profit in this, a little bit of juice still to be squeezed out. Not sure how much more. 
care to Esther Hazen. A bit of footwork. Don Brown. Tackle! Furbank there as well in the centre of the defensive effort, and so too Tom Litchfield, who came on towards the end of the first half for the injured James Ram. Litchfield into midfield, and Tommy Freeman onto the wing for this second half. See Freeman just calling for a little bit of extra support on that left hand side. No, 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 that's your second go. Don't touch. Oh, no, no. Dingwall with his arms in the air. Saints defence on alert. Don Brandt again, another thump pop, no way through. Davison blocking his way. Smith to Green. Tackle! Does well to get to the ground there, doesn't he? Look at the choke tackles on. Herbst. Marcus Smith wants it. I thought about the kick. Again, Ben, just that little glance up to see what's on. The defence is so good, they've got really good coverage. It's connected together at the moment. Least missed tackles of any team this year, Northampton. Don Brand rolling backwards into the tackle to help release Liner. Smith and then the kick, and Joseph, oh, he's gathered beautifully. Joseph on his way, gives it to Don Brand. Free Two free white Quinn shirts, but neither of them found. But still the threat, and Liner. Mitchell came round to try to snag him. Time to go wide now for Quinn's. They've got numbers with Smith. Evans took it up initially, but um, Smith and Green, if he can get it away, not quite. But Esther Hazen finds Smith, and Smith finds a lumbering George Hammond, himself, doing, doing a Tyrone himself, Green, has hurt himself. Always hated his shoulder. Ah. I did. It looks Fellas. brilliant again from Don Brandt in that of taking the ball under pressure and managing to take it with him. The ball was behind him. Did a really good job. Spins on the tackle, offloads Don Brandt, really good. And then Liner gets the extra metres. Yeah, There's the chip through. Medic's coming over Joseph. Now reads it particularly well that's the that's the take from Don Brandt where it looked like he dropped it that keeps the move alive Green gets that outside foot which takes out one more defender makes it an easy two on one did he need to dive like that he lands on his elbow doesn't he I don't think he needs to dive he just if you watch his elbow now really points into the ground but really good line from Green to hold that space in the outside, take out the last defender. I think he could have just dived, got there himself in hindsight, but the roll from Esther Hazen on the pass was really good. What is the conversion? Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah, so Cotty from Marcus clear, Smith, no and it's a seven-point <laughs> score. Much needed. Well, they needed something a bit different, didn't they? That little dribbled kick through from Marcus Smith. The defensive line had been really good up until that point. And here's the ending. Marcus Smith rolling out the back, getting the ball back off green. Is he coming back and playing? Well, I think um, it okay, no worries, looks as if George Hammond is staying on, so that'll be a relief you mean now and you're in Northampton and you're Furbank you look where he's standing and you drop the ball right on his head well, he's trying to go the other way to um, pick out Joseph instead and he picks out Don Brandt who is absolutely central to the build-up to the try just vicious Ben I would never do something like that that's disgusting picking on an injured player on the field it's, it's not it's not rugby okay just make sure you're on side yep There's clearance, Merle's chase, ball beats him. It's a big period this for Saints because lost their captain just before half-time. They got that arguably slightly lucky try from Mitchell, which gave them a good lead going in. But now Quinns have come out with intent. They're starting to get the ball moving. Things are sticking. They're not making the same mistakes. Good period here from Saints. It's an absolute must. George Hammond really doesn't look happy. He was holding his right arm very gingerly in the middle of that line-out. Meantime, Saints drifting away to the left-hand side and Hendy with...
Freeman up in support, but look at Hendy, the strength of the young man to win 10 metres. And then laid back nonchalantly by Coles and lost, and it all rather evaporates. What a shame for Saints, it's a brilliant carry. Is his nickname the horse? Should be. Gives it a big step out of this challenge there. Looks like he's caught and he just drags those trailing leg, that trailing leg through. Takes out another what, three defenders in doing that. That gives Northampton the ability to go back wide the other way, but unfortunately the handling in the backfield from Munger not quite up to it. I don't know how these nicknames work, but if we decide that he is George the Horse Hendy, I think, well, then that's I think, his nickname, I think isn't Ali it? Had, Ali had discovered that, and it's yeah. to do with his running style. No, I discovered it. I oh, told you it? that a couple of weeks oh, ago. Well, okay, well you've made it up, have you? I know, well, I am. George the Horse Hendy, as we've been calling him for years. There's worse nicknames. Austin would be another. <laughs> He's uh, He is mightily effective, though, isn't he? Strong, it's... Uh, Good player, good young player. The horse. It won't stick, but we're giving it a go. We're back with Josh. It's not the best of views there, Josh. No, he's got a terrible seat. He's got a terrible seat. Sat behind two second rows. <laughs> go. This is where we are. Get what you pay for. Oh. George Hammond in the middle of all this. Yeah. Come on, there's I'm not space. sure he wants to be there, Nick. If you just, I was yeah, watching him before. Yeah, He's stretching yeah, there. Let's look at him stretch a little bit more before this. Watch what he does. He has a little stretch. He goes, nope, there's my shoulder popping back out again. That does not look good for that young man. He's having a little word with himself. Go on, you can do it, but I'm not sure your brain can keep your shoulder in its socket. Well, if this goes down again, we're going to have a chat with uh, James Craig, who is uh, Northampton's line-out coach. Very much part of um, Saints' brain trust at, at half-time, getting the messages across. We'll um, wait to have a chat with James in a minute or two as Marcus Smith absolutely clobbers that. So let's have a, a word with James now. James, I wonder, when you're doing your job, how much say do you have at half-time? What was your contribution to the half-time chat? Uh, it's very much dependent on kind of where we're, where we're going well, where there's an opportunity and where uh, we perhaps need to tweak some things. But, yeah, not a great deal from a line-out point of view, but um, obviously delivering those messages coherently to... Uh, to the group of forwards is, is very important, making sure they get a couple of key messages that are going to really influence our performance as a team. Uh, that's ultimately the kind of art of the half-time team tour. The, the, the line-out's gone sweetly so far, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, we obviously lost a knot straight in the in the 22, which uh, I thought was pretty harsh, but they're the areas that we need to, need to execute. Um, and obviously, generally, our attack has created some opportunities, but we've not necessarily taken them like that. What were the other points being made by the other coaches? What were the points that caught your ears? Uh, just defensively, really, um, we need to get some get some kind of time around the tackle, whether that is um, in the air or on the floor. We just uh, allowed Quinn, Quinn's very quick ball in that first half, and they are um, clearly a very dangerous attacking side, so you've got to slow them down um, in the tackle area. Actually, being very generous with your time, James, but just one more question, because we talked about actually how little both sides were competing over the ball at the breakdown. Was that part of your plan coming into the first half? Uh, no, but I mean, once you get kind of the fast first phase, it then kind of, again, particularly against a good attacking side, it kind of rolls on from there um, and it gets harder and harder to find a contest at the breakdown. Um, you've got to get the first couple of phases right and get some time in those. I thought actually our first D set when we can actually ended up conceding was generally pretty good. Um, we've just got to get find a way to kind of get the ball back within those, those 15 phases. Um, otherwise, a bit, like I said, the dangerous attack inside are going to at some point put you in score. Great stuff, James. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Trevor Davison, arrived from Newcastle back in March. Well, Saints are still ahead. James Craig Saints are still ahead, but without Lewis Ludlam. 
just wonder whether you might make them the slight favourites right now, Austin. What do you what do you think? Well, I'd take the five point lead. Definitely. I'm playing in this direction down. What I always used to think was a slope, but if you ever said that to any Saints fan, they they wanted to kill you. Quins, if they can if they can just block out like Lol said at half time, those mistakes, particularly at set piece. It looks like their attacking games with a little bit better structure. Get your numbers in, get them early, you stay on your mark, OK? On your mark, numbers in, in. And George Hammond, the, the last into that line-out, it was the same routine, the short one, and Smith and Esther Hazen and Green and now Murley. Takes on slight home. And slight home and um, Tom Litchfield win that battle in terms of metres. And now the counter up. Look how many shirts are in there, but Harlequins have worked equally hard to make sure that it's still theirs. Lewis. No, 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 no. We're not leaning on rugs. Very few wingers, Nick will beat Slight home around the outside. It's exceptionally quick. Even Murley. Murley and Hendy. Mitchell. Taken by Dingwall, nearly up to halfway. Pearson, arms out. Ooh, and upended as he uh, falls over Walker. Sarah Walker happy enough with that, just um, one of those things. Dingwall to Angus Scott Young, who came on just before half time for the injured Lewis Ludlam. George Furbank is now Northampton's captain. This is where they're missing Ludlam, isn't it? Just that ability to, to punch a bit of momentum. So they have a couple of carries, a couple of little tip on passes, not getting anywhere. Mitchell will go to the air. Green. Oh, and then walloped hard by Furbank, who is up for it physically tonight. Northampton's 10. Just a slight change in Northampton's defence. We've talked about how much better it is this year, but the level of hassle, they don't just let a team have the ball, and once it's won, there's constantly little counter rucks coming in, and then if the first person gets any sort of joy, the next person follows in. They're just going back to being really annoying to play against, which is what you want from a defence, because it just takes away some of the mental ram of the attack because they're constantly worried about whether they're going to get a nudge or whether a boot's going to get on the ball in at the round of the breakdown. Coxie, I'm coming in, penalty only, against number two for that tackle, which he said is OK. He puts his knee on the floor, is off his feet to make the tackle, so it's a penalty, Coxie. OK. It is, yeah. Right, Do you want it on the screen? Yeah, it's the uh, voice yeah, of um, yeah. Tim O'Ee and Tempest. Tempo, okay. and here's what we were talking about that we thought was OK. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I see you mean, so he's definitely, he's already on his knees when he makes that tackle, it's dangerous. Only, this is uh, this is sensible mark, referee because I tell you what we've been worried haven't we about some of the tackles we've been seeing now he's okay. clearly trying to wrap but they're trying to make a point that if you're going to go that ball, low you have right, you can't be off your feet because that, that's going to make just players think yeah, about how they it. approach those tackles another star for he's tempo on his feet when he makes the tackle he's already on his knees and then does it okay so it's dangerous it's just a penalty okay? three more in this game it'll be up to five <laughs> I think we should give the officials like stars of like really good spots Thank and that's you. a Coxie really good spot isn't it? inside the Northampton half just beyond the 15. Just no, he's just giving it away it's four meters yeah. Yeah. he sounds like a posh you <laughs> tempo doesn't he <laughs> Mark's over here from, from the, the worst side. insult you could ever give anyone you can't take it from there the Mark's here. posh yours are you in front of the half row? why is that a bad insult isn't that <laughs> an improvement on something that's almost perfect already Meantime, Furbank, who continues to impress at 10 for Northampton. He's with air ball just inside Quinn's 22. Oh, Saints missing him, and that um, that boot might just be precautionary, but it's it's. Always a worrying sign. That's more of a concern because it looked like it was a dead leg to begin with, which is... Yeah, you'll see the guy in a boot on the side, it is a worry, Nick. Let me be very 
clear. Stop clubbing. Stay on your mark. Get your numbers in. Sam Matavati being told to stop shuffling across to the left hand side. And he picks out Laws. And back to Matavesi. He was set up by Waller. And now slight hope, full of fizz. Scott Young, oh, it was behind him instead to Pearson, and Pearson in the clattering business. Northampton looking for the bonus point score. Davison drives it on, then another few rolls, and Mitchell and Pearson underneath the posts. Slight home weights on this right-hand side, Litchfield being buffeted by Quinn's defenders. And the buffeting did its job. What a turnover that is from Don Brandt. Under real pressure. It's a great move from Northampton. And because they win the collision, Harlequins end up overwrapping. Brilliant from Pearson twice. But then Harlequins in the desperation end up overwrapping. Northampton stay on the blind side. The ball comes back this way. They had big numbers, Northampton, but the turnover, crucial moment. Just releasing that pressure valve. But that's exactly the sort of carry that man's going to have to deliver with Ludlam not on the field. It's been their, it's been their problem all season, though, hasn't it, in the red zone? Really good when they go through multi-phase, but when they get into the red zone, their efficiency has not been that good. Same, same today, 2.7 points each, but just a couple of turnovers that have gone against them. They could be long gone in this game now with a bonus point. And a brother who plays his brother on the left-hand side of Northampton. Scrum, Ethan Waller off, Alex Waller on, Elliot Miller-Mills for Trevor Davison. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Care. It's Freebie for Quinns. Penalty for in at the side against Coles. Green was running hard. Oh, that was nicely done. And, um, but for the advantage, it would have been worth following. But that we can Coles goes up in the line out and ends up landing almost on the wrong side and then enters the mall straight away right in front of the referee's assistant. Looks like Quinn's uh, preparing to bring on their replacement hooker, Nathan Jabulu, 20 year old academy hooker. He's uh, warming up vigorously below us, but uh, before him. Um, in fact, at the same time as him, Chandler Cunningham South. Wonderful to see athletes like him finding work with Quinns. Although rather depressing that he couldn't still be doing it with London Irish. But at least he hasn't been lost to the Premiership. Herbst, oh, and Law's got there and got there well. And Pearson looks to profit. Another former Irishman, Dombra. Got his hands to it, and now Quinns have it back, and Baxter on the 10-metre line. Hammond, who seems to have recovered from the injury that he caused himself with the try scoring. Evans, Smith, and Baxter. Esther Hazen, oh! Well, I don't know whether he thought he was going to be the decoy, either way it went forwards. Oh, I think it's just another good example of the not being precise enough. Smith's a great kicker, we know, but this kick earlier on, look where he puts it. He puts it 10 metres away from where it needs to be. If he puts it a lot shallower, it's a lot easier for his winger to take. And that's been the story of Quinn so far in this game. They've just been slightly off. We saw it there with a little pass, slightly off their timing, not quite as precise as they need to be. If, that, if that's right on the money, you can beat most defences. They've just been 5%, 10% off from where they need to be so far. Still in it, though. 20 to go, you wouldn't back against them. One of those changes that we talked about. So Jack Walker's night's work done. He'll be um, thrilled to have had an hour or so on the pitch, and Nathan Jabulu is on. Meantime, Danny Wilson and Nick Evans still in deep conversation. It's interesting that Herbst came off for Cunningham South. Dino Lamb's gone into the second row, but looks like Hammond's happy with his shoulder now. A big relief. Dingwall. Oh, that looked high. It was high. 
So Furbank with free ball. Laws oh. nearly. See, that kick was on the money. Absolutely perfect. I thought Danny hit the ball. Yeah, seatbelt makes contact with the neck. Not right de right decision. This is a good kick. This is the uh, the twelfth time that that George Furbank has started at fly half for for Northampton. Been good. He's been excellent. And not with the things that you'd expect from him, not the flair, the running, the width. Defensively, very, very good. Tactically astute. And maybe we'll see a bit of that flair as well in the last 20. Scott Young highest. Mitchell away quickly and slight home and uh, immediately Chibulu in with the tackle. There's a, another new man, Alex Waller. Mitchell having another look down this nearer right-hand side. Oh, he got it away brilliantly to Pearson. Pearson has another go. Matavesi. It's obstruction, I thought, there. Just a knock on. Well, Saints with the knock on advantage. Mitchell, a little trip, but then the pass away to Scott Young, and it's opening up, and then Furbank gives it away. Oh, he's got it back. A second attempt. Alex Coles thought he'd lost it, regained it, scores. Bonus point. Well, Saints. When they get their hands through the contact, when they get bodies through the defensive line, they look absolutely lethal. Haven't done it enough probably for their liking tonight. But on the opportunities they had, they've come up with some big breaks. That was the knock-on, or potential knock-on, but you saw it was off a of Harlequin's hand, I think, Murley. And then Furback straightening up. Coles lets it bounce off his chest, regathers it. But Three players taken out by Furbank and his offload. And there's nothing Joseph can do to hold yeah, seen Coles back clear, from behind. Clear. Does he definitely get it down under the posts? Does he definitely score it? It's a brilliant piece of play from Furbank, like you said, pulling in three defenders. One minute here. Yeah, we've got water carriers there. Can't see from there, but I think it's under no, no. his body there, isn't it? Quinton, their eagerness to get on with it, got on you with it a bit too quickly. Of there were um, medics yeah. on the pitch. Let's have another look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. gets it oh, down. Mate, I had a medic, medic here and then there was a water carrier over there. So. If you want to do that, it's got to be clear on the field, OK? To the final quarter, what can Marcus Smith and Co. do? Smith will have seen how confidently Owen Farrell has started his Gallagher Premiership season. Putting himself did really well there to allow the ball to come back. Had fallen on the wrong side, but just shaped his body. Made sure he didn't give away a penalty. That means Northampton have to clear and keep the ball on the field. Green. Into a, a thicket of green. Green, black, and a bit of white. This is Chandler coming himself. Always impressed whenever we saw him down in Brentford for London Irish. Ooh, slight home came in, but um, Stanley sent backwards by Sarah Cox. Jabulu, a little roll. Did really well, Jabulu there. Stole a few extra metres that he probably didn't deserve. Or shouldn't have done, but. Just didn't give up, stayed really low, very squat, isn't he? Powerful. Gets underneath the defenders and just keeps that leg drive going. There we go, that dip of the head. Almost into the sternum of Scott Young, and Scott Young gets himself in a bad body position as a result, and he just keeps that leg drive going. Nathan Jabulu's next job will be to throw in a, this line out. He, he's new to all this, new to the Premiership. Debut at King's Home on the opening weekend of the season. He's learning from the likes of Jerry Flannery, though he's learning from one of the best. And Jerry and the coaches are, are making a change, two more changes in the front row. Santiago Garcia Botta and uh, Lovejoy Chawatama.
on for Baxter and Lewis. Smith, Murley, try right at the start of this match. Four and a half minutes, early lead for Quinns that has been chipped away at by Northampton, and they now have a healthy lead. And Care, a little slip, but a handy position for Quinns. It's been a while, and they've got a penalty now, so here's free ball. Lamb to Dombrandt. Garcia Botta and Chawatama, two new props in tandem. No advantage. Well, outside. There's, uh, there's another former London Irishman who's, who's found alternative and welcome employment cool. this season. Up the road never got back on side. At the stoop. He's very proud of that, um, that little snippet. He's also, if you were watching a little earlier in the season, uh, a mean barbecuer. Yes! Or, yes! or briar, as I think the kids call it. He's good on the briar. He's a very good rugby player, as we um, discovered when we were watching him with Irish. Another throw for Jabulu. That close. Oh, it was brave and it was brilliant to Lamb. And here goes Dombrandt. Earning that space with the quality of the line-out throw and the jump. And here's Cunningham South wrestling away. Oh, this position with its germ from the line-out. Dino Lamb not far away. He needs to lever this backwards for others like Cunningham South again Harlequins also going for what would be a, a bonus point securing fourth try Jabulu and then Hammond he's already got one Saints offside taken on again by the new hooker Crabbing left, but getting closer and closer. Another advantage. Care will take it quickly, and Sarah Cox, a little peep on the whistle. You're Hammering away at that line. Meter, so. Get the penalty advantage. Just wonder what they're going to do here. Little tap and go from Don Brandt. Off he goes. Takes three Saints players to stop him. Dino Lamb's there. Cunningham South trying to rip him over. That's oh, another Saints penalty, despite the best efforts of Courtney Laws. Lewis Liner screaming for it. Splendid isolation away on the right hand side. It's going to take some passing to find him quickly. So for the time being, still straight up the middle, keeping it tight. Chawatama with the latest surge. Waller coming in. Another penalty. Just starting to rack up, aren't they? Those penalty numbers for Northampton. Tom Brandt wants the ball. Fellas, your penalty count here is up. Penalty count. How, how many penalties do they need to concede this close before it's a yellow card? Cunningham South going again. Oh, a little. Drive all of his own and the try scored. What Saw finish. the options and Evans gets there. The try, okay. What a good finish. Just that element of delay. Little dummy pass, but keeps his body shape, keeps his body position, invites the defender to, to make contact with him and then just extends and drives himself over the line. Felt like it was coming for a while, didn't we? Tom Brandt goes quickly. Cunningham South, really good carry there to get through that first tackle. And then Will Evans eyes up, just looking what people are doing. He's got a man bound on him, has a little look, shows the dummy. That just makes that outside defender hesitate. Slight time, isn't it? Just has to hesitate because of the threat of the pass. And then it makes it a one-on-one, -on -one and Evans just extends through. As Slight home comes in, there's nothing he can do. And manages to ground the ball in the process. Bench has made a big impact. Cunningham South carries, clear, getting over the gain line, getting fast ball, putting a lot more stress on the Saints' defence. 
had to give away a lot of penalties there in the red zone, like you said. Lucky that they've still got 15 on, and they conceded the five. Oh, look at the score now. A little over 10 minutes to go. Quinn's back to within five. Will Evans with the try. Nice shot. That, just see Evans's hand go down there. They call that the cannon arm, where they just put the book, put their hand on, and that allows you to keep your legs further back, which means the defenders can't get to your legs really. I think it's something that might get looked at by the authorities because it's a really potent weapon, and Harlequins are using it a lot. We've seen Launchbury do it, we've seen Dino Lamb do it, and now we've seen Will Evans do it. Meantime, um, early job for Will Porter, who has just come on for Danny Kerr. Next job for Martin Bayfield is to have a chat with us. Yeah, with Ethan Waller, um, Ethan, the usual roller coaster ride of a Northampton Saints uh, performance. But what we saw in the first half was an immediate response by Saints when, when Quinn scored. That, I guess, is what you want to see right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think we spoke a bit about half time about not making it a shootout, going score for score. Um, and I think we went two points, ahead, two scores ahead. We were on the right verge of doing that, but uh, unfortunately, we let him into our half through just a few errors. And like we said in the first half, we keep ball, then we can really exert pressure on teams. Um, Nick, I'm going to go back to you because it looks like things are going to get rather exciting from here on in. <laughs> Martin, not one of life's great gamblers. But it does look like Northampton might be up to something here, so this might be the right decision. What a run this is from Litchfield. Mitchell there quickly. And now Pearson, oh, it's been lost and won back by Nathan Chibulu, who um, is making his presence felt since coming on. I absolutely understand why Martin brought the chat with Ethan Waller to a premature close because Saints were a gathering force. Really disappointing because the Litchfield break was fantastic. But then Pearson's timing of his run couldn't have been better to win that collision but just couldn't quite gather the ball. How good's this from Litchfield though? Well, Coles first, manages to break and roll. Cunningham South comes back and assists on the tackle there but Lovely little step on the inside of Estes, and then he goes back to the outside to take out those straggling defenders. And that sets Pearson up perfectly. Just couldn't take the ball with him. Oscar Beard on for Caden Murley for Quinns. Both sides near to emptying their benches with a match to be won in the last 10 minutes. Mitchell. Saints with the advantage. Oh, and now Hendy, and he's got Slight home to the right hand side. Slight home, maybe to win it. He's got two. Saints may have the one that matters most. Oh, what a fantastic score that is. They had the advantage, they knew they could play free. And Hendy does a brilliant job of holding Tyrone Green. Looks like he might have pulled something Slight home in scoring that, but just watch. The effect Hendy's angle of run and his speed and threat have on Tyrone Green. He has to stay until he sees the defenders on the inside reconnect. And by the time he gets back out, there isn't the space to cut him off. There we go. Drags him out. He has to stay. He has to stay. And now Slight Home has enough space to win that race to the corner. Brilliant from Hendy. He's been great all night. And Slight Home. As soon as he's got that ball safe, you know there's only going to be one result. That's all clear, Coxie, all good. Thanks, Couldn't have done anything better, Tyrone Green there. He's treading water, waiting for his defender to come and join him on the outside. As soon as he's free, he gets out and slight home has already got past him. Ah, Sam Vesti enjoyed that, Phil Dowson enjoyed that. He'll enjoy it all the more if this... Finds the target. Look for half a second as if it might. However, He's ten having, point lead. Fairbanks having some good game, isn't he? This is a brilliant pass. The precision of it. Look at Hendy's hand. He knows where he wants it. He wants it just to the outside. Give him two extra yards. He gets those yards. Then he's got the gas to get the ball to the outside. What a wonderful finish. Great try, but all about the precision of the pass. That stops him by one yard. The defence gets the upper hand. He's been amazing tonight. Jared Evans on for Lewis Liner. Porter to Smith. 
Cunningham South. Sarah Cox had just called tackle, hadn't she? It's the right decision. Must have been a knee down. But just as is it Miller Mills just found the ball in his grasp. Marcus Smith has uh, has gone to full back. Mason has become very accustomed to playing in the white of England. And Jared Evans, Welshman brought in this season to replace uh, the now departed Italian Tommaso Allen, is at fly half. Cunningham South continues to um, to catch the eye. Ball back with Jabulu. Porter. Esther Hazen. Less than five minutes to go now. Jabulu and Cunningham South, once again, the two new men charged with making ground. What ground he made. Porter to Hammond, who's still with us. No change there. Here's Evans. Oh, he's nearly got through. And he, uh, had Elliot Miller Mills there to stop him. Harlequin's very compressed within about 15, 20 metres. Now some width being provided away on the right hand side that Porter perhaps looks at. Uh, Quinn's penalty. And Esther Hazen rolls around to the left-hand side. He's got Smith for support. Smith with work to do. And, oh, the tackle was strong from Mitchell. However, still the London threat. Esther Hazen flicked away by Hammond. Here's Oscar Beard. He's got fresh legs. Very nearly found a way through. You're good. Absolutely fine with your back. Great tackle from Courtney Laws, and then he would have won the penalty if they weren't coming back for the advantage. Got back to his feet. His workload has been phenomenal tonight, getting over the ball. He's been one of the only Saints who's actually jackaled all evening. Around the field, defensively very strong. We saw him that cover tackle in the first half. It must be great as a coach, isn't it, when you get somebody like that coming back from injury? No, no, I get that. You've got to move quicker. Second thing. You're on a warning, OK? In here, there's too many penalties. That's really just telling Furbank, who's captain of Northampton at the moment, that they're on a warning. No more penalties or a yellow card. First job for Quinns to try to secure another score that would bring them back to within losing bonus point range, however. Oh. Northampton roars. Errors at key times. The Harlequins are making one final change. James Chisholm, the last of their replacements to be employed. Uh, <laughs> taking over from Will Evans. Oz, player of the match. Well, look, Saints have had a really good evening, haven't they? I thought Courtney Laws has been fabulous all over the field, exactly what they needed, particularly with Ludlam going off. But I have to give it to George Furbank. His stats are sensational. The way he's controlled the game, his passes, his kicks from hand, his carries, that head-to-head -head battle he's won against Marcus Smith, not just in the numbers, but just how he's controlled the game and the opportunities, but moreover, the precision. Both brilliant tens, but tonight, George Furbank is our... Man of the match. Uh, he, uh, he scored 17 points in what was a record win here at the start of the year, New Year's Day. It's going to be a, another record win, but it's um, heading towards a, another significant one. And 
Furbank's played a big, big role, as has Mitchell. No, he's always got it in his hands. Oh, and right up to that point when he gave it to George Hammond. And now Quinn's searching for what would be another bonus point at the very least. Final 90 seconds, 10 points behind. Superman's waiting on the far side of the field as well, Nick. Yeah, Tyrone Green away to the right. Oh, but still, the battering run from Esther Hazen. Keeping it tight and physical. There's the new man, Chisholm. Chawatama looks interested. He doesn't get that far. Didn't need to. Harlequins have their fifth. The new man, Jabulu, has their fifth. And what time is left for them to conjure even more out of this, maybe? Smith needs to rush this, make sure it's kicked off. Give them time. That's all they need is a kickoff. It won't matter that Northampton are walking back. The ball will still have to be kicked. But Mitchell, just why aren't they clearing their lines here? Maybe trying to see out the clock, but could have easily put that into row Z of the, the stand. Taken, eaten a few more seconds off the clock, but really good finish. Again, those props staying low in that comfortable position. Well, front rowers, sorry, staying low in that comfortable position. They're used to scrummaging in and then inviting those defenders onto them and extending over the line. Into the 81st minute. You can see how far Quinns have to travel to engineer what would be one of the more spectacular wins of this first few months of the season. Smith, Esther Hazen. Joseph. States working hard. Quinn's having to work even harder to get out of their 22. Try score at Jabulu. Jared Evans. Oh, it's an important tackle from Pearson, nearly ripped it away as well. Chisholm. Chawatama for Smith. Evans. One more big job for this Northampton defence, for Lee Radford's Northampton defence. Smith and Esther Hazen and Green. Not much room, no room. Run out of room, and Quinns run out of time. And Phil Dowson's Northampton back into the Premiership's top four. What a thoroughly entertaining start to the weekend that was. Ten tries. Equally shared, but it's Saints who scrape it by three at the Gardens. Northampton 36, Harlequins 33.